Hey, my construction entrepreneur. Let's go over real quick how to build rates, okay? Um, sometimes building rates applies to uh, someone may ask you for a labor only price, right? There's other times where someone will say, hey, I want you to remove your materials from your list and break and separate those two items, break it down to where I only see your labor and then also your materials. Okay, so you have to learn how to do that, right? You have to learn how to know what it, what are you making per labor per hour, right? Now, mind you, um, you don't just use this for any type of estimates. We're only talking about actually labor and materials type estimates, labor only type estimates, or that particular breakdown that I just talked about. Okay, now when you're doing a full estimate, you know, everything goes into account. You don't just use your loaded rate number here at the bottom here in this in, in this O column here. You don't just use that, okay? You actually plug in their uh, base rate here, and then you'll also tattle in um, the fringes, um, and then the labor burden will be added in as well. And it should be added in into that section and the overhead and profit is calculated throughout the entire type project or the entire section, okay? So what we're gonna go over here is uh, at the top of the page, you see here, your input, if, if this is a public works job, type job, then you're entering what classifications that you're using for this, this particular estimate, okay? Uh, maybe in uh, San Diego County, maybe in Los Angeles County, uh, maybe in Ventura County, uh, or maybe out of state in Pennsylvania or um, Oregon, you know, uh, looking at some projects in Oregon uh, for next year, for the uh, second quarter of next year. So um, Oregon, you got to look at what's the prevailing rates for there and, and what are the going rates for that particular area. Uh, and then you input it there. That way, if someone else comes into this document, they know that that's recorded, okay? They know that that's where those rates were pulled from, okay? Uh, then you enter in the, the trades that you're inputting into this estimate, and then the issue date, all that information is actually on the DIR, okay? And you only use this if you're using the DIR. There's also an expiration to that determination of rate. Um, you want to look at that and you want to input that in there because if, if someone comes in there and realize that, hey, you know what, this project will be going on through the expiration date, then you need to actually include um, whatever up increases that they're getting. Remember, this is only when you're dealing with Public Works and Davis Bacon type rates, okay? Uh, uh, prevailing in Davis Bacon. Uh, if you're just doing regular rates, then literally you'll come down here and you'll zero out these columns here uh, because none of them will apply to you. Now, if you're union, uh, you would input, you know, where uh, the health and welfare pension and things like that training in these columns here. Um, and you also have to remember that is based on some some union fringes are based on our percentages. Some union uh, uh, fringes are just one flat rate, like the carpenters is, uh, I think, like $18 or uh, so. It's one flat rate. Uh, like the IBW is some of the columns are based on percentages. So you have to make sure you calculate that and put that in there. Pretty simple. All right. So um, uh, what we're doing here now, this is part of the Construction Entrepreneur Estimating Program. I've been building this program for about eight years. Uh, some of you that's been following my channel for a while have seen me do actual live estimates using this system. Um, I created this system using, uh, from over the years, using different type of estimating systems. And I put something together to make it easier for us as construction entrepreneurs, whether you're starting out or whether you're seasoned into this, it makes it very easy to use. It's accounting for everything and you can see everything that you need to see. Uh, 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 in different areas to get your totals, uh, to understand your percentages and where you're at on this estimate. And it literally breaks it down. Now, today I'm only talking about rates. So here you literally, you can literally input, you know, that person's name right now. It says operators group eight backhoe. 
that's actually a, a prevailing rate um, uh, term, right? And then you see this is the, 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 the take home rate, and these are the fringes here, the total here. Um, all these are the fringes here as you come down these items, these columns here. Uh, then they give you a total here. Then when you get here, you enter in your labor burden section. Okay, this is your labor burden here for this column right here. It's your labor burden. Uh, up here is the prior year. Here's the current year. It's at 27 percent. Okay. Uh, next column here is overhead. Overhead is at 10 percent. Last year was at 18. Now that varies depending on what type of project you're going on, what you need to account for. Here's the profit is at 10%. Last year it was at 15%. You can see that. All right, so let's just go through a standard billing rate, right? We got, you see, you got some areas that are blank here. You got uh, Tyrone Jones, okay? And you got, <clears throat> got Tyrone Jones, and then you got John. John Mason. Okay, you got John Mason. Well, I want to pay, what, what do I want to pay these people, okay? What do I want to pay John and Tyrone? So I want to pay Tyrone, let's say, 25 an hour. Um, I want to pay Tyrone 25 an hour, and I want to pay John, let's say, John is on the totem pole, and I want to make sure John gets $15 an hour, right? Now, Maybe I don't have these fringes, or maybe I do. But let's see if I have fringes in here and I'm paying these people. Now, mind you, if you have fringes, then obviously there's a classification that you need to look up to figure out what those rates are. You just don't guesstimate those rates, okay? Um, but let's say if that, that fits into their classification for what they're doing, at the end, my selling price for Tyrone is $62.88, and my selling price for John Mason is $40.52. So if you come here, it looks like on overhead, I'm making $5.20 an hour from Tyrone, okay? And then I'm also making $5.72 from Tyrone as well in profit, okay? So that's my, that's my total profit that's my total profit and overhead that I'm making from Tyrone. Okay, you get that? So I'm making 520, right? Plus 570, no, 572, okay? So I'm making a total of almost 11 bucks from Tyrone, okay? An hour, okay? That's every hour Tyrone works that's what I'm making. I'm clear about what I'm making. But I say, hey, I want to raise that up. You can come here and you can input, you know, you can say, hey, I want to make it 30%, okay? And then I'll bump that up. If you see, that bumps it up to 17.15 per hour uh, on profit that you're making for Tyrone. And then that bumps up to a 74.30, 32. I like that number a little bit better. That fits more into where I'm going and, and, and how I want to build out that labor for that particular project, what if he's doing, you know, some drywall, grading, concrete, uh, stucco, uh, T-bar ceiling. Um, you definitely want to know what you're making per person every hour if you're doing a labor-based job. And this program helps you provide that, okay? John, it looks like I'm, uh, his, his, his out the door rate is 56.16. Looks like I'm making almost 13 bucks an hour on the profit side and $3.93 .90, on the overhead side for John. And you can change that, okay? You can go, you know, you can say, hey, you know, I, I just need to go for 13% for him, okay? And then that's what you can go for, okay? And then John and, um, now John bumps up to 511 um, an hour, and uh, that's for overhead and 1331 for profit. Okay, so you can actually do this on a sheet of paper. I prefer you do it in some type of system. Whether you build an Excel spreadsheet or whether you contact the office to purchase this estimating spreadsheet. 
okay? This SME system is great. Let me know if you, if you need it. Call the office. We can definitely get it out to you. Um, uh, the version that you'll get will be uh, uh, blank unless you want a certain type of uh, uh, system or rates plugged in, uh, which will be additional cost because someone has to take time to do that but uh, you would receive a blank sheet. This is something that I've been using over time for different projects. So this is my own and, and, and what I use. But uh, you definitely, if you don't have an estimating system, you need to get one, okay? Start off with something like this or build something for yourself so you can track and kind of get a little familiar with using Excel. Because once you grow and you get to a place where you need to have a system, um, you have to realize every estimating and takeoff system is Excel based. Okay, so learning Excel early on is great, especially if you're going to uh, advance later on and start adding the systems. And you have to remember that as you continue to grow, you need to catch up to your company or stay ahead of your company, depending on what position you're at and how you're growing your business. Me, I like to stay ahead, I like to implement systems and uh, uh, things that I may need or my staff may need before they need it. That way, when it comes time, I have already implemented it within our culture and everyone is already used to using it, especially once it becomes in full use in my business, okay? So if you need an SME system, let me know. Hit the office up. We can get you set up, get you plugged in, and also tailor it for your business. That way you can now keep track of your numbers. You can build rates like I did here and go for every job out there and actually know what you're making. And that's the key. So I'm gonna let you go with that, my construction entrepreneurs. Remember, hustle hard, then hustle harder. See you on the next one. Thank you. <laughs>